The bowline is commonly used to tie ropes to boats or boats to ropes and one of the best ways to create a fast and functional loop. Why a bowline instead of almost any other knot? Sailors began using the bowline centuries ago. Early ropes, particularly those made of hemp or other natural fibers, can hold a lot of water when wet. Much like your favorite cotton t-shirt, as the rope dries, it shrinks, causing most knots to cinch up when totally dry and making it impossible to release. The advantage of a bowline is that when it's under great pressure, it becomes a tight, secure knot, but when the pressure is released, it's generally easy to get undone. The only problem you will run into is that the bowline is almost impossible to release if there's still pressure on the knot. To tie a bowline, step one, create a loop close to the end of the rope. Step two, bring the end of the rope up and through the loop. Step three, Take the end of the rope and bend it under and around the part of the rope at the top of your loop. Step four, pull the end of the rope back through the loop. One of the common ways people remember how to tie this knot is to think of the end of the rope as a rabbit, the loop as a hole, and the standing end of the rope as a tree. The rabbit comes up through the hole, goes around the tree, then back down to its hole. The simple noose knot is used by hunters to catch small game, but it has a myriad of far more useful applications. It's a great way to make a simple lasso, and will work as a way to put stress on a line attached to a tarp or a tent as it will slide, but when let go, it will hold its position under stress. To tie a simple noose, make a large bite in your rope. Place the working end beside the standing part of the rope. Now, tie a half hitch with the working end of the rope around the standing part. Tighten the half hitch. Now you have a loop in the rope that can slide. This knot works best in small ropes. This isn't the sturdiest of knots in the world. Half hitches have a tendency to slip. So don't use this to support anything heavy or something important. Think of it as a short-term speed knot. To review, using a thin rope because this knot isn't so hot for thick stuff, make a large bite. Place the working end beside your standing end. Tie a half hitch in the working end around the standing end of your rope. Tighten the half hitch and you have yourself a simple noose. The alpine butterfly is also sometimes referred to as the lineman's loop. It's a sturdy yet easy to untie loop that is tied in the middle of a rope. It stands up against pull on either ends of the rope or any direction of pull on the loop. Because the alpine butterfly is tied in the middle of the rope, it's often used to take up slack to eliminate pull on a damaged part of the rope or simply as a handy, non-rolling loop in the center of the rope that can have many uses. There are two ways to tie the alpine butterfly. Which way you choose to tie this knot depends on the amount of slack on the rope and the size you want the loop to be. If you have plenty of slack and you just require a small loop, the simplest way is to lie the standing part of the rope across the palm of your hand and wrap the rope around your hand with the second wrap landing across your fingertips. Next, wrap the rope around once more, this time crossing back over the rope in your palm. Take the loop of the rope that is across your fingertips and pass it over the X of the ropes at your palm, tucking it under and pulling it towards your fingers and off your hand. Finally, to set the knot, pull on both the loop and the ends of the rope. If you're using this knot to relieve the pull on a damaged section of rope, ensure the damage is in the center of the loop at your fingertips. This will ensure that the damaged part is not under any pressure. The other way of tying the alpine butterfly is used when the rope doesn't have enough slack to be wrapped around your hand or when you require a longer loop. Make a loop in the middle of the rope and twist once more to make almost a figure eight. Pinch the cross at the bottom of this eight with one hand and use the other hand to bend the top of the loop back until it touches the rope just below the cross. This will form a sort of pretzel shape. Continue to lead the loop under and in front of the original cross, pushing it through the middle of the pretzel. To set the knot, continue to pull that loop and then on each end of the rope. It can be difficult to adjust the size of the bite on the alpine butterfly once it's tied, 
so be sure to make the initial loop a little larger than you would like to end up with.